Good evening. Welcome to Yeshua House. I'm Pastor Danita, and this is Believer School. We started Believer School to help Christians understand their rights and responsibilities in Christ so that we don't have to get beat up by the enemy every time he shows up. So tonight, we're going to look at the unloving spirit. Now, this is a real nasty dude that shows up, and you know, if you don't know about him, then he can take uh, privileges, shall we say, with your mind and tell you things that are not true. And because you don't know the word of God, you don't know not to believe him. So well, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you tonight and we praise and glorify your name. You told us to come boldly into your throne room to receive our mercy and receive our grace. And Father, we do that right now. We just boldly come into your throne room. And Father, we just open our hearts to receive your mercy and receive our grace. And we say, Holy Spirit, come look around. If there's anything that makes you sad, we fall out of agreement with it right now in the name of Jesus. And we just release the Holy Spirit to move in our lives today to show us the things we need to see so that we can fall out of agreement with them and get into agreement with your word. In the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach Jesus, amen. Well, let's get started. I'll share my screen with you. You'll have to pardon, I've got a little puppy dog running around here and he fusses sometimes. Here we go, all right. So the unloving spirit, we call it the antichrist unloving spirit, has a plan to destroy a person in spirit, soul, and body. And it brings torment to a man. There is no other spirit that's able to accomplish it. It prevents a person from being able to give or receive love. So by the end of our lesson, sorry, by the end of our lesson, I want you to be able to describe the symptoms and effects of this unloving spirit and be able to identify um, how the unloving spirit works in your own life or in like family members' lives. So you'll be able to see what's going on. So let's start um, in the love chapter. This is a good beginning for this teaching because we're learning about an unloving spirit. We need to amplify the need for love as shown in 1 Corinthians 13. This is so important that if our bodies were to be burned and we didn't have any love, there would be nothing to profit from it. And so we want to stand firm on what the word of God says. And so here we go. Chapter 13. If I were to speak with eloquence in earth's many languages, and have a heavenly tongue of angels, and I did not express myself with love, my words would be reduced to hollow sounds of nothing more than clanging cymbals. If I were to have a gift of prophecy with profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possessed unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gifts of faith, it could move mountains, but never learned of love, then I am nothing. If I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a martyr, without pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when a blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about its own achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honestly and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place and shelter, for it never stops believing in the best for others. It never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after the word of knowledge is are forgotten. Oh, present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. 
When I was a child, I spoke in childish matters, for I was thinking I was a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see but faint reflection of riddles and mysteries as through reflected in a mirror. But one day we will see face to face. My understandings are incomplete now, but one day I will understand everything just as everything about me has been fully understood. Until then, there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run to. The unloving spirit is the opposite of all that God ordained us to be. He wants us to love him, others, and ourselves. The unloving spirit work is to separate us from God, ourselves, and others, and then have us hate ourselves and believe that God loves others, but not ourselves. Pretty mean, huh? So how does this unloving spirit find its way into our lives? Well, when, if we were kids, we would call this spirit the king of the hill because this is the strongest strongman out there. And he gets all the other principalities to work for him. He especially likes to work with bitterness and rejection. When bitterness or rejection, um, well... When they're somewhere down the road, the person begins to reject themselves and feel bitter towards themselves. The unloving spirits are allowed to begin their work in your life. Also, the unloving spirit might be in your life because it was in your generations in the past and wants to continue its ugliness in your life. Abuse can bring an unloving spirit into your life. That was what happened with me. Maybe you've lived with another person who was full of this unloving spirit, and now you're saying that you experienced the same things that that person said they were. So what is an antichrist unloving spirit? An unloving spirit who does not want you to be touched, hugged, kissed, feel love, feel accepted, or receive affection which make you feel loved. He also does not want you to be able to give true love to yourself, to others, or to God. Here are some thoughts that the unloving spirit might put in your head. I'm a loser. People don't like me. Hey, they even hate me. God doesn't like me. And even though God's word says he does, that's only for other people. I'm unworthy. I'm shameful. I hate myself. I'm no good. There, there's hurt within me that I can't explain. That hurt is so painful and it's very driving. It will drive you to the nth extent to try to get out of the pain. Um, a sign of the unloving spirit's presence. The unloving spirit is very selfish. This person is very selfish. Now, they don't mean to be. I mean, they're not sitting around going, well, duh, I just want to be selfish. That's not it at all. Um, but they are. They're very focused on themselves. It's hard for them to care about others because they're always talking about themselves, their problems, their needs. Um, you don't care to hear about another's problems, good or bad, because you're so focused on your own hurt and pain. This spirit can be abusive and needs people to work out its personalities of bondage. This personality of an unloving spirit goes further than self-rejection, hatred, and bitterness. It's also double-minded. The Antichrist spirit will drive a person into perfectionism looking for love and acceptance. He will push one into self-exaltation but in triteness, and we'll get to those words. Other words that are similar meaning to triteness are hackneyed and stereotyped and threadbare. Trite means lacking freshness that invokes attention or interest. 
trying also applies to uh, a once effective phrase or an idea um, from a long fam familiarity, like uh, you win some, you lose some, is a trite expression. Hackneyed is stressed beyond being worn out, overused as to become dull and meaningless. All the metaphors and images in the poem are hackneyed. Stereotyped implies to falling invariably into the same pattern or form. Views of minorities that are stereotyped and out of date. Threadbare also applies, um, used its uh, possibilities of interest have been totally exhausted. The mystery in the novel was threadbare plot. Um, threadbare also like with clothing, the clothing's just worn out. On one side of your life, you're experiencing self-bitterness, self-rejection, and self-hatred. And then in the marketplace, or you know, when you're at church, or at work, or out with your friends, or the people you associate with, there's this false personality of self-exaltation. Um, a lot of my uh, friends that were involved with the spirit, they work out, they eat right, they've got the right body. Um, they are the perfectionist and, and they must be number one. They've got a real big spirit of competition. Sometimes, um, many who have an unloving spirit will proclaim that they don't know who they are. Um, they're confused and disoriented. It's, it's a part of that spirit affecting them. Galatians 5.14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This scripture gives instruction that we are to love our neighbor as ourself. I'll tell you what, I can love my neighbor. I really cared about other people, but loving myself, that was really hard. That was really my, my stumbling block. The unloving spirit demands that we do not love and therefore are unable to fulfill God's word. This is the plan of our enemy because he is against all that God stands for because he is anti-Christ. He is against Christ and also wants to take the place of God. God does not respect one person over another. He loves all people. He does not love our sin but hates sin because sin is disobedient and rebellion towards him. And he made us. God is ready to forgive us as we forgive others and repent for our sins. He forgives us. First John nine, for the light of truth was about to come into the world and shine upon everyone. You see, God wants to shine his light on everyone. He wants that truth to come into every life. There is not someone, you are not special that you don't fit under God's love. Um, John 3.16, for this is how much God loved the world. He gave his one and only unique son as a gift. I apologize, my son's coming through making noises. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world. Okay, let's start with 17. God did not send his son into the world to judge or condemn the world but to be its savior and to rescue it. Understanding God's heart of love helps us see the truth, especially when we can read it in the word of God and not just hear it from a man's mouth. God's love, and that is who he is. God is love. And we are being made into his image and to love God, ourselves, and others. The unloving spirit will use many underling spirits to reinforce his position in your life. He's a liar and the father of lies. 
He brings complete spiritual armor so that you will be deceived and hooked into believing that the way you feel about yourself is just the way you are. That shame, that guilt, that worthlessness, hopelessness. The broken heart. Proverbs 13, 12 tells us, heart, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire cometh, it's a tree of life. We can be programmed into that unloving spirit, which means at some time in our life, by repeated verbal, physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, we began, we began to believe the lie that we were no good and just a big failure. Or in the church I was in, they said, well, I'm just a poor sinner. I'm just a sinner. I just won't ever be anything more than a poor sinner. God doesn't say that. This negative faith is able to break our heart and cause us not only our spirit, our soul to fail, but also our bodies. Our body is affected by our thought and memory concerning who and what we believe about ourselves. Jesus said he came to bind up the brokenhearted. Over here in Isaiah 61.1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound. And then we find out about the word of God. A merry heart does good like a medicine and the broken spirit dries the bones. Here we see the truth from the word of God. A broken spirit dries the bones and the bone marrow where the white blood cells grow. That's your immune system. Jesus has already come and is ready to bind your broken heart. He's going to heal your broken heart. You see, self-pity is one of, it's a really important part of this. I always like to stop and touch on this. Um, is one of the legs of the unloving spirit stands on is self-pity. Um, this spirit will bind you to the past as a super glue, and it won't allow you to go on to the future. It's an, it gets accusing spirits will accompany self-pity and hold you past the feelings, feeling sorry for yourself, that reality just kind of flies by. But we have an antidote. The antidote for the unloving antichrist spirit is 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love and mature love casts out fear. Because fear has torment, and he that fears is not mature in love. Yes, the antidote for the unloving spirit is the love of God. That perfect love will cast out fear of the antichrist and loving spirit has instilled in him. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, each night the Lord has asked me to make an opportunity for people who don't know Jesus to be able to accept him as Lord and Savior. And this is a really easy thing to do. We're going to say a prayer in faith, believing. And when you take that step of faith, God's going to take his step in and do the rest. And you will be made a new creature in Christ. So say this prayer with me. I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that you will not cast me out. I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I believe that Jesus died for me according to the scriptures. And I believe that he was raised from the dead for my justification according to the scriptures so that I might 
be set right with God. I believe that because of his death, burial, and resurrection, I am set right with God. So I receive Jesus as my Savior and accept Jesus as my Lord. And your word says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm calling on the name of the Lord so I know that I am saved. You say, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. And with my heart, I believe I am made righteous with God. And with my mouth, I confess I am saved. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Well, congratulations. You're a new creature in Christ. We would love to send you a little, a little mini book about how to walk in your new faith and in your new life. So if you just send me a little uh, note in the little comment box, and we will be glad to share that with you. Y'all have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. Bye.